This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 51 of the Dressage Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network. We would like to thank our sponsors, Kentucky Performance Products. They offer supplements designed to give you the most value for your dollars. Visit them at kppusa.com. show for this week will include a conversation with Frank Steuben of Steuben Saddles, who will explain about some new technology that's being adapted for Steuben Saddles. The comfort comes by the fact that we have uh, added to the seat area two little, I would call it, cushion left and right side with a left three channel in the middle of the seat. So this gives, in fact, uh, freedom to your coccyx and uh, pelvis area while riding. This is Chris Stafford in Lexington, Kentucky. And I'm Catherine Haddad in Fecta, Germany. And you're listening to the Dressage Radio Show. Hey, Catherine, how are you? I'm quite good, Chris. It's nice to be back on the show. Yeah, thanks for coming back on. You've uh, been a busy bee since we last spoke. Yeah, you know, I don't even remember when we last spoke, but I think (laughs) I've been to a couple horse shows in between. Uh, I'm sure you have. Um, Yeah. I'm sure you have. How's it going? Uh, good. I went up to a national show with my young Grand Prix horse, Vinyamaro, and I won a Grand Prix special with him. And then I had a very good start with him in Hagen at the CVI Three Star. Um, I did not show him in international. I showed him in the national test there. And I got to meet uh, Adrienne Lyle from um, Idaho because I got to see her show at Hagen as well, and that was really nice. And I saw Debbie again. I haven't seen Debbie in a while. Um, and then I went off and taught a clinic in, in Sweden and hooked up with my good friend, Tina Wilhelmsen. And, yeah, I've just, you know, you know me. I'm always busy. Just go, 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 huh? Absolutely. Yeah. And I know you tweet a lot. You're on Facebook. You, look, you use all these social media tools. So we, we, know, we know that you've got an, uh, a new a new well a visitor isn't he to your uh, so if we hear from if we hear a little voice in the background it's your visitor right tell us about him yes i i have a third corgi here he actually happens to be the son of Gigi and gizmo my two corgis um but he's about six years old and he's just visiting for the weekend which he thinks is a fascinating experience so he's pulling all of the toys out of the basket <laughs> and he's he's barking whenever i'm not looking at him and he's just trying to get my attention all the time Oh, attention seekers, but they're adorable, those yeah. corgis, I have to say. You know, they some, are. some people don't like our conversations about um, our, our dogs, but how many dressage riders don't have a dog, Catherine? I don't think there's any dressage riders without <laughs> a dog. <laughs> well, I know. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just as bad. I'm, and, you know, we all love our dogs. And uh, you know what? I didn't have my dogs with me this weekend, Catherine. I went down to the um, Great Smoky Mountains in Tennessee and had a wonderful hiking weekend. And, I, and it was marked by my first sightings of a black bear. Well, that's pr- you're probably lucky you didn't have your dogs with you then. <laughs> because that, that might, might have been an ugly moment. Yeah, it could be because, you know, mine are Irish black and tan terriers and they think anything's fair game. It doesn't ha- matter yeah. how big they are. Yeah, see, my, my dogs would also think that it would be fun to chase a bear and um, they would have no idea what they would be getting into. So I think it, I would rather not have my dogs around if a bear was present. Yeah, I think you're right. Have you ever seen a black bear? Yes, actually, I've seen black bear three times in my life. Um, and strangely enough, I was just talking to a friend about this the other day. Uh, I have seen Black Bear three times, and all three times I was with one of my best three friends in the world. And we sighted the bear together. Special moments, memorable yeah, moments. Yeah, isn't huh? that it's kind of weird, huh? That is weird, but, uh, yeah, I think I'll always remember them. my first, first sighting of a black bear. Well, you know, there are bears in Switzerland, and that, that's a nice segue into our guest this week, um, who we're going to be talking to uh, later on in the show, and that's uh, Frank Steuben of Steuben Saddlery. And I remember when I lived in Switzerland, you know, we had bears in the bear pit uh, in Bern. And yes. If you, I, you, uh, I don't know if they're still there. Do you know if they're still there? I don't know if they're still there. I don't know. But Switzerland is such a mountainous country 
that the bears actually can can free roam there without coming into too much contact with the population. Absolutely. Well, as I said, we're going to be talking to Frank a little bit later on in the show, but before we go any further, uh, we, we're going to uh, hear about a brand new show that's been added to the Horse Radio Network. That's the Western Radio Show, sponsored by Succeed. So uh, before we get to our news and uh, the rest of the show, let's hear about this new show that's been uh, added to our family here. It's an exciting new uh, addition, and we're thrilled to welcome our friends over there at the Western Radio Show. Hi, everyone. This is Glenn the Geek here, founder of the Horse Radio Network, and I am thrilled to announce a new show coming out in the Horse Radio Network, one of several new shows that will be coming out over the next number of weeks. And the first one coming out is the Western Radio Show. We have been doing this for 18 months, and for 18 months I've been getting emails from people in the Western world saying, when are you going to do the first Western show? You're doing all these English shows. Well, we're doing one now. And I'd love to introduce Alan Moorhead and Jimmy K. Cox, the hosts of the Western Radio Show. Hi, guys. How you hey, doing? Hey, Glenn. How are you? Good. And I want to tell everybody first that they can find the show at westernradioshow.com or they can just go to horseradionetwork.com and find all our different shows. You are now the seventh show on the network, and I am so thrilled to have the two of you superstars of the Western world here on the Horse Radio Network. No, she's the superstar. I'm just I'm here. not, but I love the word. We can keep using <laughs> it. <laughs> did, did you say seventh? You are the seventh show now, and we're actually uh, eight and nine are coming out here shortly. Well, I'm glad that we are seven because I'm on, I got to go to Vegas here in just a few weeks, <laughs> and I feel lucky being the seventh show now. I like that number, too, Alan. It's a sign. We're going to do well. Well, I'm, I'm I am so thrilled. You guys are so much fun. We had you on the Stable Scoop show a little while back. And we had so much fun. I said, we got to hire them and, and have them uh, come on the network with us and do the Western show. Alan, tell us just a real Reader's Digest version of uh, where you come from and, and, and why you're a superstar. Uh, South Carolina. There you go. <laughs> and now Jimmy K? <laughs> Texas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Alan yeah. is actually one of the uh, finest announcers in the rodeo and western world and he from what is. I hear, from what I hear you're very popular in your announcing and you certainly have the voice for it. By the way, you make me very jealous that way. I, I, no, I shouldn't. I have been very fortunate in, in what I do and and I started kind of late. I've been around horses for a long long time and uh and uh I was I was thinking at one time Glenn about about going to a horseshoe in school and uh, to have some work in the equine industry. And my Your dad back told me, thanks you for not doing that. Yeah. I, oh, shoot. Yeah. My feet. <laughs> yeah, you too. know, a wise, a wise man once told me, never let your back do what your mind can do for you. In your instance, it should be never let your back do what your mouth can do for you. <laughs> I, somehow I knew that was coming. That's cool. And that's basically what my dad told me. Uh, he was living at the time, and I, I lost him in 93, and, and I thank him every day for this, and I know he's listening to me up there in the, the great rodeo arena in heaven. He was a potato chip salesman, and he told me, because I used to work in radio, he said, son, I'd find a way to make a living with my voice if that's what I could do, and I was going to do something like that, and uh, it's paid off. I went to Zoop Doves announcing school uh, years ago to learn some mechanics about rodeo announcing, have announced some cutting horse shows, pleasure horse shows, uh, have been selected as the Women's Professional Rodeo Association announcer of the year twice. I was because of your good looks, Alan. Had nothing to do with your voice. That's because I no, liked I was there. I, I gave him the award. It was <laughs> <laughs> it's because I like barrel racing so much, and uh, and uh, have twice announced at the international finals rodeo. And uh, this will be my second year, 2010, uh, to have been selected to uh, be a voice for over 1,500 kids. Uh, who are high schoolers that have achieved something that uh, Jimmy K in her career has achieved as well, an invitation to the uh, National High School Finals Rodeo this year in Gillette, Wyoming, and, and just, just tickled and feel blessed every day to, to be able to run my mouth and make a little money. See, now you run your mouth, and Jimmy K actually does it on a horse. <laughs> Absolutely. And I mean, can oh, run. She's got I can run old. my mouth anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy K, tell us a little bit about you. Oh, there's not much to tell. I just I grew up uh, ranching and rodeoing and on the racetrack and uh, was the president for a, a time of the Women's Professional Rodeo Association, which is the largest organized women's sporting association in the world. Is it really? And, I didn't uh, know that. Yes, rodeo, uh, huh. been to the Texas Circuit Finals and 
had been to the Women's World Finals, WPRA World Finals, and uh, currently hosts a television show on RFD TV called uh, Women's Pro Rodeo Today, which comes on Wednesday evening and Sunday mornings, and and also on Thursday mornings. So uh, keeps you pretty busy. She's being a little humble too, isn't she, Alan? Isn't she just like this great barrel racer? Because and, and one thing I'd like to interject right here, because as being a, a four time announcer at the Women's World Finals Rodeo and, and you mentioned and we mentioned uh, Jimmy K running barrels as a barrel racer. She is also qualified and competed at the Women's World Finals Rodeo in the tie down roping and the team roping. And I mean, the really? tie down roping, that's calf rope. Yeah, she had to get off a horse and go down and flank the that's calf like work around tie three I was- together. I was a wild card, and I got in it showing support for our association, and I took so long that I got the buzzer, which means that I took so long, they finally blew the whistle and said, enough. Get out of the ring. Get out of the arena. Well, we're tired of you. And the thing of it is, is she, I mean, she has got the heart of the big show in wrestling, but uh, she's so petite and so small, and this calf just kind of, I mean, she did not let go. I mean, she hung on to the tail, this calf. And uh, I think Jimmy K told me the next week that the uh, cleaners refused to take those clothes that she was that trying to turn into. That is not true. That is not true. Dirty. But my chiropractor <laughs> did make a lot of money the next week. <laughs> well, guys, this is going to be fantastic. If you want to hear more of the Western Radio Show and more of this kind of banter and some fantastic guests, as I understand it, you guys are going to be covering the wide world of Western, not just rodeo, not just uh, showing, but pleasure riding and trail riding and, and anything that involves the Western lifestyle, right? Uh, we're if it's done in the, yeah. If it's done in the West and on a horse, we're going to cover it. I mean, and if it's if it's done in the East and it's done on a horse and it's done with the Western way, we're going to cover it. Well, that's great. We're looking forward to it. I'm so excited about this new show. Everybody can find it at westernradioshow.com. Take a listen to Alan and Jimmy K. And congratulations and welcome to the network. Thank you. Good to be here. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you, Glenn, and I already feel like a part of the family. You're such a suck up. Well, Catherine, uh, Western radio is Western riding is probably not something you have much time for. Did you ever do any when you were riding up? Because you know, when you were growing up, because that's a great, uh, you know, I mean, for an American. Um, I know your friend um, Heather Blitz and our friend here on the Dressage Radio Show. She did some and has that connection with the Western world, but uh, made the I switch. I actually grew, grew up doing Western riding, but until I was twenty, that's all I did. Uh, and I, well, not all I did, but I had horses that did Western pleasure and Western equitation and barrel racing and Western riding and reining. I was um, the state champion in 4-H for reining a couple of years. Um, so I, I have, to, I get a big, uh, a big grin out of it when I see that Anki, people talking about Anki doing reining and she, she announces things sometimes on Facebook and I, I have a laugh and I write her back and say, yeah, you go girl, but you just <laughs> used to want to be because <laughs> I, I used to do it, you know, and I did some endurance riding also. I, I actually did the, the Michigan cross state trail ride when I was quite young from lake to lake. You start at Lake Huron, you cross the state and end up at Lake Michigan. Oh, and it's, fun. Uh, yeah, it's 240 miles. Oh, that sounds like a lot of fun. So, it is a lot of fun. You you do it over 10 days, and, um, you, of course, you ride in a Western saddle so that when your butt gets sore, you can hook one leg over the horn and ride side saddle for a while. <laughs> um, but it's, And you can put, tie a lot of packs and stuff on a Western saddle, which you need when you're doing um, so many miles in a day. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, that's interesting, talking about saddles, which we're going to be a, a little bit later on. But uh, the your experience then with Westerns, I think, would make you a, an interesting guest. Uh, I think we should have cross guests on our different shows, you know, and I think you would be a good guest for our friends over the Western Radio Show. So we're going to uh, put a plug in there for you. And uh, <laughs> I'd love to do it. <laughs> and, and I think they'll have to send uh, somebody from... Uh, the Western world who's done dressage over here onto the, uh, onto the dressage radio show too. Talk about cross promoting our shows. I think, I yeah, think, I think that's it. a great idea. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, as I said, we're getting, we're getting into our show this week, which is going to be about saddles. And I know your tip of the week is going to be about saddlery as well, saddles as well. But before we get to that, we just wanted one item of news and, and that really are, and there is your friend. There he was. He just, he just, Spoke, spoke up. <laughs> Hold on just one second. I'll try to get him under control. Come here, little dog. 
I'm bribing him now. I'm bri- bribing him with little bits of dog food. Come over here. Don't talk to the whole world on dressage radio show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, as I said, our news of the week really is um, to bring you an update on uh, Courtney King Die, of course, who had that very bad accident uh, some weeks ago now, and that she is progressing marvelously. Uh, Catherine, she's um, in a rehabilitation center and having undergoing intensive therapy, but I believe her speech is now pretty normal, and uh, she's working on the physical. Uh, re- recuperation there and strengthening the the one side that was weaker than the other and making r- remarkable progress. Yes, well, I've I've been following all of Jason and um, London Gray's updates on Facebook, and it does sound like she's doing much better. And I'm really, really happy and relieved for her, and I have every intention of visiting visiting her when I go to the United States this summer. Well, we again want to send out our very best wishes to Courtney and know that there's always an open mic here for you, Courtney, when you're ready to come on the show. I know our audience would be delighted to hear from you in, in, in your own voice. And, of course, Lyndon has been a great friend of the show, bringing us uh, updates from time to time. But now the progress really is quite remarkable. And, uh, you know, what an inspiration. And I'm sure you know her fitness and her determination and competitive spirit have helped her enormously in this recovery, Catherine. It just really speaks speaks to how important it is to to keep fit in this world. Yeah, and I think I think also how important spirit and a fighting spirit really is, how it can really pull you through crisis in your life. Yes. Yes, it certainly has proved to be that and uh, I believe she's getting talking about dogs, she's getting visits from her dogs regularly now. That's excellent. And uh, they probably will be pulling up with the trailer and uh, bringing a horse to, sh- to visit her anytime soon too. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I hope so too. Well, we'll bring you updates on that. We'll also post a link to Courtney's website where you can uh, read more about her husband Jason King's updates on uh, uh, Jason Dye's update on uh, Courtney's progress. So check those out. Well, we're going to take a short break here to hear from our friends over at Kentucky Performance Products. And when we come back, uh, we're going to share with you a conversation with Frank Steuben. Well, if you're a regular listener to the show, you know we talk a lot about Kentucky Performance Products. And that's because they are a name you can trust to give you the most value for your supplement money. Kentucky Performance Products offers supplements designed to target specific problems that are made with high-quality ingredients included at effective levels. The company's supplements are intended to complement, not compete, with your dressage horse's current feeding program, guarding against over-supplementation, and each product is backed by sound research and the money-back satisfaction guarantee. And today we'd like to talk to you about Nalox, the original equine antacid. It's recommended by veterinarians and leading horsemen as a way of maintaining a healthy stomach, which reduces the risk of ulcers. Nalox can be given daily to horses exposed to stressful conditions or as needed when shipping, competing, or during stall confinement. You know, you can learn about Nalox and all the products at Kentucky Performance Products at kppusa.com. That's Kentucky Performance Products at kppusa.com. Well, Catherine, I know some weeks ago now you told us on the show here how you had made a trip down to Switzerland to visit the Steuben factory. Uh, And Steuben is a saddle that you've been using now for many, many years. And and you shared with us uh, just an introduction there to some new technology that or some technology that they were adapting for the saddle. So it it seemed like... uh, uh, a wonderful conversation that we should have to learn more about this, and uh, I appreciate you bringing that to us. So uh, let's share with our audience the uh, conversation that we were lucky to have with Frank uh, recently. Well, Frank, thank you so much for joining us on the Dressage Radio Show today. Good evening or good morning to America. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Frank, the name of Steuben, of course, is uh, very well known in the dressage world. Uh, But tell us a little bit before we go any further about where you're based in Switzerland and a a little bit about the history of the company and how it was established there. Fine. Yeah, we are located here, in fact, in the heart of Switzerland, just in the middle uh, on the lake of Lucerne, which is about uh, one hour uh, southwest from uh, Zurich. And uh, it's a 
let's call it uh, craft rural area. Um, the Swiss company was uh, founded in 1966, and uh, this was a decision made by my parents at that time because we felt that we should have a second leg for our company in another European market. In these years, we had two, um, let's call it Euro European economic blocks, which uh, was not foreseeable how they would develop. That was at one part the EC market, and the side of it, there's another group, was another group of countries, the uh, uh, EFTA markets. So it was uh, the opinion of our advisors to have one leg in the EFTA market to be able to free trade whatever would happen from the uh, tech side. So, and, uh, yeah. uh, so, of course, your company now makes saddles for all disciplines, so many different disciplines. But um, since we're focusing on dressage, give us a sense, Frank, of how many different models you have of dressage saddles. I would not be able to answer, really. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I mean, we have some uh, key models, as you would find in most uh, of the branded products, but uh, we have really a wide choice that we can adapt uh, to the rider and the horse depending on uh, sizes, of uh, length of legs, support from the knee. So um, you have markets where people prefer deep seats, other markets where you have preference for slightly less deep seats. So uh, in fact, we try to adapt really uh, the product to what the market is looking for, always based on the concept that the saddle should be a tool of communication in between uh, rider and horse. That means first aid uh, in order to communicate. Well, I know that, the, as you said, the, the product, the Biomex is not, or Biomex is not new in itself, but tell us how it, it fits with... Um, I mean, it's, it's very new, but it's, um, as I said, not a new product. It's a new uh, option that you can add to our product. Well, in fact, it is, it is a development uh, that we made with a clinic here in Switzerland, a clinic for uh, orthopedics, which is located in St. Moritz, very famous uh, clinic. And this clinic tries to analyze uh, <coughs> sports in all directions, in order to prevent uh, either uh, accidents or to improve the well-being of the user. So they are specifically active uh, on the skiing side. But fortunately, we had the contact and studied the subject uh, horse and rider. So the idea is to uh, give relief to your column while riding. To the, to the rider's spine, you mean? To the rider's spine, correct. Okay. So, Frank, you sent me one of these saddles to try, and um, most people who know me know that I'm very skeptical about trying anything except my favorite old Steuben saddle that I've been riding in for 25 years. But I tried yeah. this newfangled saddle that you sent me, and I have to say it is incredibly comfortable in the seat. What makes it so comfortable? So uh, the comfort comes by the fact that we have uh, added to the seat area two little, I would call it, cushion left and right side with a um, left uh, three channel in the middle of the seat. So um, this gives, in fact, uh, freedom to your coccyx and uh, pelvis area while riding. So we have le less pressure points in this area which finally gives uh, more freedom to the rider in the movement. He will not defend uh, himself in any way, so it's a real free movement. And finally also uh, the, um, what do you call it, the spine moving freely, okay. or the column moving, moving freely. So do you think this Biomex seat benefits a jumping rider or a dressage rider more from, from a health I, perspective? I think it will. I think it will uh, help everybody who uh, suffers a bit uh, from back problems. I mean, we know that riding in general is good for the back, but uh, you must be uh, trained, or let's say you must have a good physique uh, in order to be well in the saddle. And we know that many people uh, come to the riding 
already having problems through, uh, yeah, let's say, not enough exercise or bad working position. So this will help you to find your good position and uh, to work freely. Okay. Well, I did notice in the time that I that I tried out that seat that um, the pressure on my tailbone was relieved. There's absolutely no pressure on the tailbone. All yes. of the weight of the rider is taken on the two seat bones. And I have mm-hmm. to say that was immediately um, much more comfortable comfortable for me sitting in the saddle. So I think it's not it's not just product for amateurs who um, who are just getting into riding, but it's, it's also very helpful to a professional like myself who spends many Definitely. hours in the saddle. Exactly. For those who work really hard day by day, it's definitely an enormous help. And for us, the important part was that you could measure it. That means it's not just something we, we can say. Uh, we could measure it. And Biomax, in fact, is a label belonging to the clinic. That means we could not just uh, put Biomax label onto the saddle because we feel it's a good idea. No, the, the fact is that you can measure it. You can measure the benefits, you mean? You, you can measure under the seat leather. If you yes. compare, let's say, our traditional saddle uh, compared with the same saddle with Biomax technology, you can see the difference of the pressure points in the coccyx and uh, pelvis area. So you can actually measure the pressure that's been being put on the rider's seat bones and tailbone. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I would Very imagine, nice. Frank. I would imagine, Frank, um, by measuring that, and if you were, for example, to put two hands under the seat bones between the rider and the saddle, that you would feel quite a distinct difference there in the pressure of the seat bones on the saddle itself, and and this would help, say, people that have an issue with one side or the other, and I'm sure you come across this all the time, Catherine, is having people sit equally with their weight equally balanced on left and right side. Yeah. Yeah. I I think that the Biomex that I wrote in definitely gives you a better defined spot to where your seat bones should be, but where it actually relieves the pressure is on the tailbone, and I I know from experience that a lot of riders have a problem with that. Yeah, and something we learned from the doctors was also the fact that if you have, let's say, some inflammation just under the seat bones, the pain can be felt in the front. That means Mm -hmm. you must not necessarily feel the pain under the seat bone, but uh, you have soft tissues that are connected from the left to the right side. So if Mm -hmm. there's an inflammation, you will feel it all the way through. Okay, that's, Mm -hmm. that's interesting. Yeah. So, so how, how do you how do you sorry Frank but how do you fit this in the saddle do, is it a kind of a gel or what, what what's the component of Biomax I mean the the component is some of our secrets so uh, it is a <laughs> high elastic material it's not a gel it's it's a, it's not a sponge it's not a gel it's an how can I say a technical item which uh, also keeps well its substance in use and it is just uh, laid under the um, seat leather, but, but on top of the webbing of the saddle tree. So it sits on the webbing of the tree, uh, just under the leather. Okay, so that would be on the, on the actual webbing. It's on the, the webbing actual of the tree. webbing. Yeah. Right, okay, the webbing of the tree, and then you cover it with leather. I was at Frank's factory, by the way, a few weeks ago, and I, I actually observed this seat being made which is how I, I know what he's talking about. But there's a, there is a, um, like a polyurethane frame made for the Steuben saddles, and then they are, they are pulled into position with a very thick canvas webbing. And mm-hmm. it's on top of this webbing that the Biomex seat is placed. Yeah, the important thing to understand is that a saddle maker, whoever it is, has to make a choice when building a saddle. So you can opt either for a, a rigid frame let's call it a fully injected molded uh, synthetic tree, or you have, as we do it, a frame which you uh, close the middle part through these webbing. And we are, in fact, creating two forces that uh, give this elastic what we call spring effect. That means when you come with your weight into the saddle, the whole saddle gets a bit shorter. You can bring your weight assistance through the seat down to the horse's back, to give these aids, 
and then when the rider gets out of the seat, the saddle is uh, getting back into its uh, original position. So that's why it's called a spring seat or a spring correct. tree. Spring tree, correct. Okay. So, Catherine, I would imagine then, right, as a dressage rider, si doing the sitting trot for as long as you do, if you had a back issue anywhere in your back, anywhere up your, your, your spinal column, this would be like a shock absorber, an added shock absorber. To, yes, to, for absolutely. Aid, for, yeah. for, 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 to aid your, your, the, the concussion, if you will. Well, I would say that the rider's joints are the shock absorbers, but what happens is that your, your tailbone, which is the tip of your spine, no longer comes into contact with the seat, and therefore you, you don't get the shock through your spine that you would normally have. So the only thing you have to concentrate on is movement and following the movement of the horse. You don't have to deal with any kind of shock coming up through the horse's back. Right, I see. Does that so, make sense? Yeah, it's, al it's almost like the difference between sitting in a car without shock absorbers and then getting your shock absorbers changed, and all of a sudden you're, you've got a smooth ride like on a Cadillac, if I might say it. <laughs> <laughs> and that has, especially for riders who have issues with their back, it doesn't matter where, they, where it is in their back, Catherine, that has to help you enormously. Yeah, absolutely, uh, I'm, I'm sure it would. And absorbing the movement. Mm -hmm. so I was very happy when uh, Catherine rang, rang me uh, late January and said that she was uh, quite surprised of the effect because I feel when we talked about in Lyon, she was a bit skeptic. And so I said, listen, just try it. Try it for a couple of weeks. Don't make a judgment too early. You need a couple of weeks of, of daily exercise to get really the feel. And it was, uh, yeah, it was a very nice compliment uh, to get this feedback. So how I, called him up, been... I called him up early and I said, Frank, it's a revolution. <laughs> <laughs> how long have you been riding in it now, Catherine? Since January. Okay. And do you ride in all your horses all the time with it now? Uh, I ride probably half of my horses with it now. I only have one of the saddles and a specific tree and seat size. So I ride the horses in it that, that fit the saddle the best. And then I was, you know, kind of hoping to convince Frank to send me another one to fit my other horses. <laughs> <laughs> and, that should be no problem. <laughs> and and what, what, is the, what is the noticeable difference when you get back into your other Steuben saddles and ride your other horses? Well, my other Steuben saddles are all at least 15 years old. <laughs> They're all the same model. They, they're all called the Steuben Schulteis, although the technical name for them is the Steuben Tristan Extra. And it's a saddle I've ridden in for 25 years. And it's a little bit like, um, you know, if you have a flat Converse tennis shoe that you just walk around town in and you've had the same Converse tennis shoes for 20 years and you just love them, they feel great when you put them on. But if you want to, if you know you're going to walk 25 kilometers, you put on new Asics or new Balance shoes that are made for walking 25 kilometers, and that that's what the difference feels like. Well, I would it's, imagine it's like you're it's like you're sitting in something that is really truly made to function for what you need. Well, Frank, I would imagine that this would be a wonderful saddle for, say, the endurance riders who are riding long distance and Two, yeah. that impact. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you make one for them? Yes, we make them uh, for endurance riders. We can make this option on uh, all sort of jumping saddles, all-purpose saddles. So anybody who would like to uh, try this, we can only recommend them to ask for our service for test saddles to try it out and to see how it feels. And Hi, Chris, I would, I would just like to mention one thing. When I was visiting Frank in Switzerland, he also showed me that they make bar stools with a Biomex seat. <laughs> so if you spend more time sitting on a bar stool than you do a saddle, then you can also get it in Biomex. Correct. Well, I like this idea. You can imagine the benefits maybe for cyclists too. I wonder if they, if they have that uh, in the cycling world. Yes, yeah, there are similar ideas in the cycling world. You have similar seats, uh, similar ideas there. And, uh, yeah, we are very happy that we got this input and that we could try this out and um, also make some agreements with the clinic. We will develop on other fields in the future, or also for the benefit, naturally, uh, if we look at the horses' movements. So um, we, we try to live this new cooperation very strongly, 
and um, are testing very deeply. So this Biomax, even if you look at it, it looks very simple, but it took us more than two years to really find out which is the right size, substance, etc., to to bring it out to the market. Well, I think this is a. It sounds all sounds so very comfortable. It makes me want to go out and ride in a Biomax saddle now and know that uh, it's going to be good for my spine and good for the horse too. Yeah, you should ring our company in the U.S. and ask for one or two to try them out. They will be most happy to uh, to help you there. And uh, yeah, try it before make any decision. Well, I should also point out that uh, there's a lot of information on your website, stubennorthamerica.com. We'll have a link on our website to that, Frank, um, so yes. so our uh, listeners can go and check out uh, the uh, the more technical aspects of this uh, technology. And uh, I, I just think it's a, it's a revolution, as Catherine said, don't you, Catherine? I mean, it's. Uh, I, I feel that way. Yes. Yeah, and, and I and I've tried a lot of saddles. I mean, I, I like I said, I've been riding in the same Steuben for 25 years, and a lot of people have tried to convince me to change. I've even had fellow competitors offer to buy me a new saddle because mine looks so old. <laughs> <laughs> but I have not sat in anything until this Biomax seat came along that I would actually agree to switch to. Wonderful. Well, mm-hmm. Frank, I really appreciate you spending time with us today and telling us about this. And uh, I know we, we we can direct our audience to to find out more about it on your website and if they have any questions. And uh, I appreciate it. Uh, Catherine, do you have uh, anything you'd like to add to this? I think we covered pretty much the whole subject on the seat. Yeah, I hope that uh, we will be able to meet you perhaps at the World Equestrian Games then in, in uh, late September. I hope so, so too. Uh, <laughs> when you come there, we can uh, explain this uh, face to face, and and any of your uh, people that listen now, they are uh, most welcome to uh, to address themselves to Stuben North America and to ask for for free test riding. Well, that's wonderful, Frank. Uh, we we'll certainly look forward to welcoming you here to Lexington later on this year, and uh, be delighted to meet you and. And uh, certainly we will put a link so people can find out more about your products and, and the wonderful Steuben Saddle. Thank you very much again for joining us today. Thank you for calling me. Well, this technology is, is just amazing. And, and again, I want to thank Frank for joining us uh, this week. Uh, it, it really makes me want to go out and sit on one of these saddles and, uh, and never want to go back to anything else. But as you said uh, in our conversation with him, you do both. Yes, yes. I, I I still ride in my old saddle on some of my horses, and I ride in the new one on on the others. And the difference is, um, I have to say, for my for personally for my feeling in the seat is amazing. When I first saw the seat and how it was constructed, I thought, oh, I'll I'll never have the same feeling of my horse's back through that seat. But it's not true. I have a super feeling of my horse's back, and it's such a um, it's such a great, uh, comfortable feeling to sit in that saddle. I still, I still dearly love the old one. There's no question about that. But when I sit on the new one, it's like, you know, it's like a difference between sitting on a hard wooden chair and then sitting on um, an ergonomically designed computer chair where you sit down and go, oh, I could sit in that all day long. Mm. So for me, it's, it's, um, it's a huge relief, and I, I feel like it's a huge breakthrough in the technology for, for saddle seats. And I, I really would, love, would, would strongly emphasize that anybody who's ever had back problems or any kind of back pain should try out the Biomex seat because it is specifically designed for you. Yeah, and I like this idea, you know, for those of you who hang around a bar, that you can actually get a bar stall with this as well. <laughs> <laughs> I sat in them there, and you can not only get them on the bar stool seats, but you can get them in like eight different colors. Oh, wonderful! Something for so everyone. So you can you can actually <laughs> decorate your bar at home with Steuben bar stools that have a saddle seat on them in Biomax. Well, what more could you want? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to order some. I think it's a great idea. Bill, that has to be the gift for you know for you for the you know we all have friends that have everything, but this is the this is for the person that thinks they have everything. Yeah, uh, that's right. <laughs> it might also be for the husband who likes to go along to the horse show but doesn't like to ride, and just wants to be com- comfortable while he's sipping his beer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, perfect, I think that's, perfect gift. That's a great idea, a great idea. Well, again, appreciate Frank uh, sharing that with us, and as I said, we will put a link on our 
website to Steuben of North America so you can go and check out this new technology. And, uh, and thank you again, Catherine, for uh, bringing this idea to us here. That, that was not an idea that I could stay silent about. I was so impressed by the, the sample seat that I tried that I just I had to share it. All right. Well, good one, too. Well, we're going to take another break to hear from our friend Glenn the Geek, and we'll be back with Catherine's tip of the week, which is going to be about saddles. Glenn the Geek here, and we get many emails every week from people who really like the shows, and they ask how they can help support the Horse Radio Network. Well, you already do that by listening to the shows and by buying from all of our fantastic sponsors. And now you can add to that by supporting us directly and very easily. The next time you need something from Amazon, just go to any of our websites and click on the Amazon banner in the middle of the page. Then go on and buy your Amazon items. It won't cost you a penny more, just an extra click. But Amazon gives us a little bit back just because you clicked on the banner. Tell your family and friends to do the same thing. Every little bit helps us to keep giving you the quality equestrian programming that you have come to love. Thanks for listening. Well, as I said, Catherine, uh, we're all about saddles on this week's show, and you've got a really useful tip about saddles and how sitting in a saddle relates to the, uh, where, where you sit relates to where you sit in relation to the center of balance. Right. Um, I think the first thing is every rider should be able to locate their horse's center of gravity, which is actually about four inches behind the elbow on a, on a normal horse, well, on any horse. And you also need to be able to locate uh, the horse's center of motion, which is in the lumbar region uh, in the loin of the horse. And when you then put your saddle on your horse and you sit in the saddle, have someone take a still photo from the side and then ask yourself, does your saddle encourage your seat bones to move toward the center of gravity of the horse, or does your saddle encourage your seat bones to be closer to the center of motion? Because a lot of, of the newer designs today are saddles that sit quite far back on the horse, or they're made to sit further back on the horse, which actually puts the rider closest, closer to the horse's center of motion. So what it does is encourages the rider's weight to interfere with the motion of the horse, and it also makes it more difficult for the rider to sit. Whereas um, if you're, you're sitting in a saddle that's a little closer to the withers and the actual position of the seat puts your seat bones down and forward toward the withers of the horse, they would then be pointed more toward the center of gravity. You're in better balance. So you need to have a good hard look at that. And I don't know how useful that tip's going to be because I don't know how many people are really going to understand it. It's an easy thing for me to demonstrate when I'm at a clinic, for instance. I, I talked about this when I was in Sweden last week, and I talk about it at almost every clinic. It's a very easy thing for me to demonstrate when I'm standing there, um, but it's something you're going to probably have to get somebody who can really use their imagination to see it without someone standing next to them and pointing it out. Is this something that could be drawn graphically and available on a website? Uh, oh, absolutely. You... Yes, absolutely, yes. Well, maybe you can pull out your artist's pen and maybe do an artist's rendition of what this looks like, or maybe use it a uh, photograph as a, as a model. Actually, uh, I, could do a, I could do it with still photos. Excellent. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a really good idea. That would be, that's a great blog idea. There. Thank you, Chris. You're welcome, Catherine. We're here to help you as you help us with it. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and and I think, as you say, it's so much easier when you can visualize something too, isn't it, like this, because balance and position and, you know, and each rider is made differently or ride and rides in a different saddle. Um, but I think the concept and the principles are the same, aren't they? Yeah, well, they should be, yes. I mean, basically, if, if you're looking for a good dressage saddle, it should encourage you to sit uh, in the direction of the center of gravity, meaning you want to be able to sit deep, um, and you, you want your seat bones moving toward the horse's center of gravity, not toward the center of motion, which is behind you. And you want to be able to feel the motion of the horse's back through the seat of your saddle. And um, you, don't, you don't want to have to put so much padding between you and the horse that you can't feel any motion anymore, because if you can't feel the motion, you can't learn to follow it. And, of course, the saddle has to fit the horse as well as the rider. So all of that stuff is very important. And, you know, in having that close contact, and I think, uh, you know, going back to this Biomex, uh, the use of Biomex, too, 
Catherine, I would imagine that that would help you feel the horse's back better because you wouldn't have this uh, discomfort of the... Oh, absolutely. You know, that you can actually sit into the horse and feel that motion that you're talking about, where, you know, where that is coming from. I think Biomax makes the rider's spine so comfortable that you you stop um, riding uh, defensively due to pain. Um, and and you can you can sit like you said very comfortably on the horse and Biomex is not a technology you can get on just any saddle in the moment it's only on Steuben saddles the, the <laughs> proper Biomex anyway um, and I think that that the Steuben saddle in particular which is why I still ride in it and will continue to ride in it is that the Steuben saddle with the spring tree really allows the rider to feel the motion of the horse's back and this spring tree you don't find in very many saddles today. Well, I think that's a great tip, and we're going to look out for your blog. You're still blogging for the Chronicle of the Horse? Yes, I am. Excellent. Well, we'll make sure we put a link on our website to to that uh, for our friends over there at the Chronicle. They look after us. They they carry our shows on their website to the Chronicle of the Horse. If you uh, are a visitor to the Chronicle, as so many of our North American visitors are, um, you can check out Catherine's blog while you're over there listening to the Dressage Radio Show. Well, Catherine, we've got uh, an exciting uh, new giveaway on the Horse Radio Network that we want to tell our listeners about now, and it relates to the World Equestrian Games. So um, let's uh, take a moment to hear about this brand new giveaway and some medallions that is free to enter. So um, we're going to hear from our friends over there, uh, Glenn the Geek and Chrissy Joy at uh, the Horse Radio Network. So uh, stay tuned. We'll be back in just a second with the rest of the show. This is Glenn the Geek here for the Horse Radio Network, and we have a very special announcement of a new giveaway that we're doing, and we're very excited about this because it ties in with the World Equestrian Games. And I have with me now Chrissy Joy, who's actually been on the 2010 radio show before, to chat about this cool giveaway that we're doing. Hi, Chrissy. Hi, Glenn. How are you? Good. Now, you were on the show with us, and you actually, last summer, were working as a intern over at the World Equestrian Games offices. And now you're with us uh, on, the sh- on the air here today in a little different capacity. Absolutely. I am coming from being an intern with the World Equestrian Games um, back in Lexington as a part of the Bluegrass Medallions, which are the official medallions of the World Equestrian Games, and they come in bronze, silver, and gold, and they are beautiful, and we are so happy to announce that we are doing a contest for a giveaway. Uh, We're going to have three lucky winners that will win, uh, whether it's bronze, silver, and gold, you never know, but um, the exciting part is these are the highest quality. They are, the gold one is gorgeous. It is 0.999 0.999 fine silver with 24 carat plated gold. So it is definitely bling for the ring. You're going to want it, that's for sure. Well, let's explain to people, let's back up a little bit and, and explain to people the medallions are like coins. They look like coins. They're not official currency. That's why they're not called coins. Yeah, don't try to spend them. <laughs> <laughs> but they are. They look like a coin. And yeah. on one side, it has the Alltech FEI uh logo that that uh what i call the flaming horse there and Mm -hmm. then on the other side it has that logo as well plus all the little logos of all the eight disciplines uh for the games so it it, it, they're really pretty and they, they are the official medallions of the games and and medallions are collectible at Olympics, at all the Olympics, and at the World Equestrian Games, at all the big sporting events around the world, these medallions are a collector's item. People that attend these events, or even if they don't, want to collect the medallions, right? Absolutely. The quality of these medallions is something that's going to last a lifetime. And this event, being so historical, the first time in the United States, these coins will only be available this year during the time of the Games. It's pretty much the best thing you could do if you have a family member who possibly can't come. Um, These will last a lifetime, and they come in a beautiful case and a certificate of authenticity. So it's really something special to hold on to, and it's 
handcrafted quality, so it's gorgeous. I have seen them in person, and they're very nice. And what we're going to do here at the Horse Radio Network is we're going to have this exclusive giveaway of a gold, a silver, and a bronze. So we'll, we'll have three different winners. All you have to do is stop by Horse Radio Network and click on the giveaway banner on the page or any of our websites for any of our shows. The banner will be there. You click on it, and you, all you have to do is go register. It's free. It's easy. There's no obligation. And it doesn't matter whether you're coming to the games or not. You can win win one of these beautiful medallions. And, we're, you know, we appreciate that uh, that Bluegrass Medallions is working with us on this giveaway and, and donating these items. It's over a $500 value, isn't it? It is. It's over $500. And we are just so thrilled to be a part of the Horse Radio Network as well. Bluegrass Medallions um, recently just hooked up with the World Equestrian Games, and we are just loving how excited everyone is. And we su- want to support our fans because you guys are pretty much the foundation to how this event's going to run and how everyone's going to have a great time. So we are so thrilled to share our medallions with you. And we hope you all, you know, sign up for the giveaway because it's a great value. It is over $500 and you will not regret the quality of these items. All right, great. Well, you can stop over to horseradionetwork.com and you can sign up there. And if you would like to buy one of these medallions, you can do so now at the at the uh, WEG store at the World Equestrian Games. You can go to their official site or you can go just to their directly to their shopping site at WEG2010store.com. That's WEG2010store.com or you can go to their main site at alltechfeigames.com and you'll find the medallions in there that you can purchase. So, well, thank you very much, Chrissy, and thank you to Bluegrass Medallions for donating these items. Absolutely. Everyone, go quick. Sign up for the giveaway. It's going to be great, and we hope to see you at the World of Clustering Games this year. That sounds like a really interesting giveaway. You know, you can just by uh, um, signing up, doesn't cost you anything to sign up on our Horse Radio Network, and you can uh, win a medallion, which is a commemorative medallion of the World Equestrian Games. It sounds like fun. You know, Catherine, at the Games, the World Equestrian Games and the Olympic Games, there are always momentums to, for, that are collector's items, aren't there? Yeah, and that sounds like one I would like to have, so I'm going to sign up for the free giveaway. There you go. (laughs) All right, well, we're coming uh, towards the end of our show this week, Catherine, but I want to remind our listeners, if any of you are involved with a group membership organization with the U.S. Dressage Federation or indeed any dressage club anywhere in the world, and we're now in 37 countries around the world, we would love to hear from you, and I'll certainly call you up. Uh, All I need is your landline number to give you a call and uh, you can tell us all about your local dressage club, any activities that are taking place and or just the history of your of your club and what that does in uh, that uh, area. Uh, So uh, just drop me a line, Chris at horseradionetwork.com. And I'll be delighted to hear from you. And I know you're going to tell everybody about uh, how else they can contact us, uh, Catherine. I sure do. Um, You can find our show notes on the website at www.dressageradio.com. And remember to visit the fan page on Facebook. I do that a lot. Or um, you can also follow on Twitter at Horse Radio or Chris E. Stafford. And um, any questions, comments, suggestions, anything you want to tell us, go ahead and contact Chris. Her email address is chris at horseradionetwork.com. Or you can leave a voicemail at the U.S. telephone number 270-803-0025. And, Chris, I think uh, you have some info on, a, on something else that we wanted to talk about, an exciting new event. I sure do, Catherine. And that's coming up on June the 8th. Um, it's going to be a two-hour webathon, rather like a telethon, and I'm sure you're familiar with those. And this is the first ever para webathon, and, it, and we at the Horse Radio Network are going to stage this two-hour web event to raise uh, money and awareness for the para dressage competitors that are vying for a place on the World Equestrian Games team. Of course, those of you who follow the World Equestrian Games or para dressage will know that this is the first time that the para dressage will be included in the World Equestrian Games. So, we over here at Horse Radio Network are delighted to be able to stage this event. As I said, it will be on Tuesday, June the 8th um, at from 7 till 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And you can call in and pledge a contribution or you can just call in. And uh, I, it might be a bit late for you, Catherine, though, uh, that you should be in bed by then, I imagine. 
<laughs> keyword being should. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you're still up or you find yourself in this country or on a, on a time zone that is adaptable for you, we'd love to hear from you too. And uh, I know a lot of our other co-hosts are going to join us. They're going to call in and share the moment with us. Uh, it's, it's going to be a really exciting and fun thing to do. It'll be live. Um, it's going to be a, a full TV production, but on the website and on a number of websites around the world. So lots of affiliate websites will be carrying it. We encourage you, if you have a website and you'd like to carry us, um, we just send you the code to embed on your website, which you put up for that period of time, and you just take it down again when, when it's over. So it's going to be for two hours on June the 8th. And we're really looking forward to that, Catherine, because we have a lot of friends from the paradressage world that are going to join us that evening. We're going to uh, have guests and uh, call in guests from the world of paradressage. And uh, the, the U.S. Uh, Para Equestrian Association are going to be involved, and as well as the USEF, USDF. And, and, and of course, I should point out, since we are a global uh, network that uh, you can follow us in other countries in the world and contribute to your local para dressage association too through this. So our first ever para webathon, the, the journey to the World Equestrian Games for our para equestrian athletes. Uh, doesn't that sound like a fun idea? It sounds excellent, and I, I hope that I can participate. It sounds like a really good time. Well, I think uh, m- maybe uh, if you keep your dog with you for a while, that dog he'll keep you up late enough. To- <laughs> For sure, he's he's got that look on his face like he's about to bark again. <laughs> well, he's probably telling you it's time to come to the end of this show. And with on that note, I want to thank our sponsors again. Don't forget to support them as they support us, and also our crew here at the Horse Radio Network, Glenn and Brian, for making this show putting the show together and getting it out every week to you. And I also want to thank Catherine as well as our guest this week, French Stube, and I also want to thank Catherine Hedak. Catherine, it was fun having you. I hope you'll keep coming back. Love having you here on the show. <laughs> I really enjoy it. I really enjoy it. And where are you, where are you going to be going before we catch up with you again? Um, I'm headed to Hamburg on the weekend to an international show. Excellent. And who are you riding? Um, it's debatable, but I think I'm riding with you tomorrow. I think I'm going to take my young horse out and see how he does with the top dog. Well, good for you. Well, I'm sure you'll be sitting comfortably in a Steuben saddle, and uh, you'll come back and tell us about it in a couple of weeks' time. Absolutely. All right. Thanks again, Catherine, and thank you, everybody. I'll be here again next week, so until then. Thanks for listening, and uh, have a safe ride. 